Good evening and welcome to the meeting of the Northampton Planning Board. At seven, uh, now at seven o'clock we have a public comment period. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak on anything not specifically on our agenda? Nothing heard? I'd have a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. I don't have to do that on this yeah. one. Okay, also for seven o'clock, proposed zoning change 350C, central business residential uses expanded, and 350B, increased height limits from 50 to 60 feet in the general business district. Carolyn? Um, so uh, you guys have seen, you all have seen both of these um, ordinances as sponsors to the ordinance, but I'll start with the central business uh, modification and um, just um, review the fact that there had been, there's been sort of a, dis a long um, occurring discussion about whether residential uses were appropriate on the ground floor behind the um, front facades of buildings in the central business district. And then that sort of came um, to a point of discussion in the little sort of mini charrette that we had with downtown um, businesses and um, other interested um, property owners for in downtown. So this ordinance is a proposal to allow um, some residential uses in the central business district on the ground floor, so long as they the those uses are set back behind. Um, essentially a facade of commercial uses uh, or in as a secondary building behind a front building that's on the public street. Um, this went to Economic Development Housing and Land Use Subcommittee and they proposed some recommended changes to the text to clarify and so I've distributed what's in front of you uh, modifications that they voted on to recommend uh, moving forward so uh, it would be our staff recommendation that you discuss this language to make sure that you're comfortable with it and any recommendation that you move forward to City Council uh, would be um, consistent with the language that Ed Lou already uh, sort of adopted and moved forward the ordinance committee, uh, typically, many times you all have joint public hearings. Um, ordinance committee is meeting on a different night. They're, they're also in summer schedule. Well, actually, they've met once a month this summer, but at any rate, they're going to meet in August, um, August 12th. So their official public hearing will be then, and then they would take any recommendation that comes out of you all tonight um, and move that forward. We've discussed this previously. How does this differ? Um, it's not, it's really just to make sure, I think it, the language, they felt the language was confusing. So it was really to, to make it easier to understand uh, the, the piece about residential uses located to the um, rear of a use and that, that space can't just be a faux facade, it really has to be a viable space of at least 20 The facade feet. isn't the right word. Right. Yeah. Okay. Can, can we just read it? Sure. I'll, I'll read it. Any residential use above the first floor, any residential use located to the rear of otherwise permitted non-residential uses that occupy a space at least 20 feet deep, and any residential use on a property which does not abut on a public way maintained by the city. Home businesses are considered residential uses for this these purposes. And this goes in the attachment Let's see, 350C attachment use and dimensional regulations. Right, which is the central business table. Um, and, and if you recall, there are a list of allowed uses. And the first uses listed are commercial uses. And then subsequent to that becomes residential use. And so it's still currently uh, any residential use is allowed above the first floor. And this liberalizes it mm -hmm. to the extent that it allows residential uses in this. Uh, you know, I remember the discussion. That's, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. What does it do for um, parking requirements? Um, well, we, a couple of years ago when the Central Business District, or maybe a year ago, was modified, we eliminated um, parking requirements in downtown. Oh. So it doesn't, it won't touch that at all. Currently, new residential uses are not required to provide additional off-street parking. Mm -hmm. okay. So that stays the so same. Most of the apartments we see are not 
in central business so that they are required to have some parking. Well, I mean, all the main street buildings that have residential units above, right. um, you know, people figure out where to park, either getting passes, monthly passes, or, yeah. Okay, any other discussion or questions? No, we want to vote to recommend this. Um, that would be, mm -hmm. yep, staff. Comment from the public? Do we have to have comment from the public on this? It's a public hearing, but there's nobody. Okay, coming. I have nothing heard. Now I can have a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Okay, second? Second. second. We've got a couple of seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, unanimous. Okay. Uh, we have an additional item on the agenda. Well, how do you want to um, uh, act on it? Oh, I'm sorry. We have to vote on the agenda. I did. Okay. Uh, Whether we uh, no, recommend zoning change 350C central business residential use expanded. As modified by economic development, housing, and land use. Second. Okay. Second. <clears throat> and uh, discussion? I think we had a discussion actually. <laughs> All in favor? Okay. Yeah. Well, next we have yeah. Okay, now we have to change the three fifty B increase height limits from fifty to sixty feet in general business Um so this one uh, I believe also has already been to economic development, housing, and land use, and um, this is a proposal to the current height uh, limits in general business are 50 feet, and the idea was to allow uh, more flexibility um, given that um, ceiling heights are increasing for, for uses, particularly for medical uses. Um, and, and there are medical uses in the general business district, and currently there's one um, being constructed on Atwood Drive that really could use the extra height, but our current heights are don't quite accommodate all the additional space that you need to build out for medical office. So the proposal is to um, increase the heights by 10 feet, and it would affect the general business districts um, throughout the city, which includes the ones surrounding um, downtown, but also there's this uh, um, pocket on Atwood Drive. Florence Center is general business right around Main Street and um, going up Maple Street and North Maple Street. Um, and then there are a couple other pockets around in Florence and then also um, No, we've seen this as well. Right. It was your, you sponsored it. Yep. And it's not changed. No. Okay. Um, does this have any implications for, say, a building that currently is 50 feet and could then therefore have an upper deck? Or, I mean, are there any? Yes. So, it, sh sure. So, anytime you have an existing building that's at the current maximum and the, that changes, then that provides potential. Uh, space for right. modification. I, mean, I think for the older buildings, the engineering constraints will keep them from adding on a floor, but to have an open outdoor public area on top of those buildings would seem, I don't, our, my image of the downtown is 50 feet, is that right? The ones along Main Street pretty much? Some go up, uh, I think the hotel, for the most part, yes. There are a couple of no, buildings higher. that are 65, right? By exception. Yes, and predating history. Yeah. So that would be my only thinking. Is just I, I don't know that I'm against it for that reason. I just want to talk about what would that mean to have you know we've had uh, conversations about you know the uses of Pulaski Park and whether the noise factor matters there. You know, is there any issue in having people outside on top of the buildings downtown? 
I generally think not, but I mean, that's the only, the only issue this brings up with me. I mean, I wish we had done it for Atwood Drive for the other building. I mean, it seems to be perfect for there, but I don't want to do it for there without thinking about what it means to the rest of downtown. Well, another way in which that could occur on an older building is one that is considerably less than 50 feet, but still might decide to go up now that there's an additional 10 feet. I mean, it isn't, they're not all at the max. Right. Yeah, for, for instance, the building that Faces is in is what, what, 20 feet high or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other piece of it, if you're, in, as it relates to decks, is that the height is actually measured to the top of the roof um, beams. So I don't know that decks would actually be, even be included. So even if you were at 60 mm -hmm. feet, you could potentially put something on top of it. It wasn't qualified as a roof mm -hmm. member or, or element if it's, it's sort of an accessory. Anything else? Okay, uh, well now we need public comment on this one separately. Is there any comment from the public on the proposed increase in height limits from 50 to 60 feet in general business? Nothing heard. Motion, please. Move to close public hearing. Second. Second. Everybody seconded. Okay. Um, good discussion. All in favor? Okay. Public hearing is closed. Now a motion for, to recommend this. We recommend uh, increasing the height limits. In, uh, I think we recommend to change 350B to increase height limits from 50 to 60 feet in general business district. Second. Okay, we'll move to second. All in favor? Have this particular agenda thing here. Okay. Now we have a request by New Harmony Properties to modify permit condition in order to record easements at certificate of occupancy instead of building permits for property at Olander and Ford Crossing referred to as Beechwood. So this I'll give a um, quick overview and then the property owner and um, applicant requesting modification is here so he can describe. Um, uh, but basically the, there's a request, the, there's a permit condition on the books for the Beechwood house lots, which are six single family house lots um, on the North Campus Village Hill at sort of the intersection of uh, Ford Crossing and Olander. And that, um, as you recall, during permitting, there were there was lots of discussion about the public paths that would um, transition between the beach park, beach park and um, the rest of the development. And so it was important at the time for the board to have some assurance that there would be public access and um, accommodate easements that would um, ensure that public access was always there. And uh, at the time it seemed that it was appropriate to put that as a, um, to require that at, uh, prior to the issuance of the fifth building permit uh, for the fifth, fifth of six house lots. For whatever reason, that hasn't happened yet and there's an interest in, in getting, obtaining the fifth building permit. Um, so with the other complicating thing is that mass development is, is the entity responsible for recording the easements, but the person who's actually developing the project um, is not mass development and they're the ones who would be pulling the building permit. So it's really an admin a request for an administrative adjustment of that condition to ask for um, allowance to have that moved to certificate of occupancy instead of the, the requirement to be prior to issuance of the building permit. And um, as the request came forward, there's also a draft easement that, that was just um, sent to us by Federal Express from Mass Development showing the language that they would propose to put in the easement, but in fact the details just haven't been worked out. So they have, we do actually have something that's in the works, so it's not that they're trying to punt it down the road and not do it, it's that it was just a timing thing. I think people just forgot about the responsibility. Um, so 
and a letter by Richard Henderson, the Executive Vice President uh, for Mass Development, uh, real estate um, portion of rest, Mass Development, stating that this would be, um, they anticipate uh, fulfilling that condition uh, within 30 to 60 days, although that was stated in an email, but I don't actually see it in this little letter. So I don't know if you want to recognize um, Jonathan Wright to fill in more details. Jonathan Wright, would you step up the podium, please? <coughs> Um, the chair recognizes me with reluctance, but I'm um, just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, Carol, thank you for making, all of you for making time for what is really a housekeeping item. At the time, uh, there was a good deal of consternation about the uh, multi-use paths around Village Hill and how they were controlled and who owned them and who was going to look after them and would they get built. Um, they were all built, the park was built, and they are handsomely used as public uh, ways. Um, because this, because we applied for a, a, a Z form for all six houses last year and it was granted, we didn't reapply for zoning for the last three houses. And because it, this is a condition that was placed on us because the board had no other place to place it, um, but it's not our work. Even though the conservation restriction on the park was accomplished, which was another one of them, this one was not. And we should have seen it, but uh, we didn't. And now here we are. Uh, it's not, <clears throat> I assure you, a matter of substance. There's not a breath of disagreement about this uh, in any way. It's just a housekeeping matter. So we do have all three of those lots sold, and uh, lots, the, the fourth and fifth, are under contract for delivery in December. So we would really appreciate some relief on this as we go forward. Um, so I think you have some <clears throat> some language there that uh, from from mass development. There there is there is no difference of opinion here. It's just that you know you had no option but to require us to do something to, to make them do something. And between the two of us, we got half of it done. Just the other piece. So it does. Say. Of all the things we did get done, uh, it, it looks great up there, and we appreciate your requiring these items because they were done forthwith. They were part of our contract with Mass Development. Your leverage gave us the ability to require them to be done. But this recording piece of the easement is a subtlety that escapes most mortals. <laughs> have you seen this one? Yes, I have it here. So they, I, I, I was incorrect. They did state that they anticipate recording this within 30 days. What it really means is they need to submit it to city council. City council has to accept the easement before it can be recorded. But um, it, there, it's in process. And this is going to give you more time, basically. You can start building the house. Right. We can, we can start our work, and uh, we still can't occupy it. So, so there's the still a, the, the same degree of protection. <coughs> so. Right. Uh, it's just, um, you know, you put it on the left sock or the right shoe. So we have to it's not ahead. trivial. It's, it's, it's important. It's not, uh, and uh, the board's con uh, uh, requirements about this we take seriously. And I, I don't mean in any way to suggest that we took it lightly. We, but because we did our zoning check at the beginning of the six, we just, it's one of those things that kind of, you know, gets lost in the edge of the feather somehow. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. Mr. Wright, I, yeah. I'm going to, I don't want to take an opportunity to fuss about mass development, but it seems to me this is the heart of what they should be doing to facilitate you, the developer, in doing the work. And so my understanding of this is they were the ones, not you, that should have been aware that this had to be done in order for you to proceed with your work. Do I have that right? That's, that's true. <coughs> um, it was a, a uh, recorded as a condition for right builders on our permit. It didn't have any standing, if you will, with mass development. It wasn't on their checklist. Although they were here and they did other items on that same list, this, it got lost. There's no reluctance or, and I can't speak for them, but having been, it's not my first rodeo with these guys. Um, well, and I'm actually just trying to understand the arrangement. It, it has seemed like a convoluted arrangement and, and every time we wanted to talk about 
the hill in mass development. We didn't have a hook, and so we ended up hooking you. Is what is kind of what seemed to happen. And I just wanted to make sure I understood that. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Hook was set. <laughs> no, we don't have any uh, um, misgivings about any of that. Uh, you know, they've they've done a good job, and I think as time has gone on, and they've gotten more used to us and different kinds of development there, and the peculiarities and requirements of Northampton. You know, they've gotten better at it. Yeah, so, and the work that they had done was, you know, they, they really spent a lot of money to do very nice walks and plantings and patio area and, you know, just, we'll be back to you in, in uh, early September, God, God and other things willing, with, you know, the 28 units that finish out that whole crest and some members of the board have seen that at the tech review and we couldn't have done that without spending two years in negotiation with them and then having, you know, all of the infrastructure in place, so. It's going to work out. Thank you. So um, there's sort of three thresholds for amendment. One would be a staff administrative change, um, you know, working with the applicant to say, okay, this sort of me this meets the intent of the permit. You can do it without going back to the planning board. Um, or the next level is actually coming to the planning board on, an, on a um, posted agenda, re requesting an administrative change from the planning board. And then the um, uh, another threshold is actually a per official permit amendment that then gets recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Staff feels like this falls in that middle category, which is why um, I, uh, we put this on the agenda for you all to consider so that it's not, so we, you need to vote on it as um, agreeing that's an administrative change and agreeing that it's an appropriate change. Um, and And so that's basically the the gist of it and you want it done at this level so that it's not you want it done at this level so that it's does so that it looks to be as it is entirely out in the open well, right exactly so uh, um, I didn't feel comfortable staff yeah. making that decision yeah. saying oh I think it's fine to move it from yeah. you know, building permit to certificate of occupancy because in some cases it does make a difference and sometimes it's harder to chase down compliance with the certificate of occupancy or, or, or preventing a certificate of occupancy from being issued when there's some outstanding mm -hmm. items. I think the fact that a mass development has proven that they are moving forward on this and they tend to do it within 30 days is another sort of um, confirmation that, that it will be done. But again, I think, and so it would be uh, my recommendation to you all that it's an appropriate administrative mm -hmm. change and it doesn't functionally change the outcome and they're still going to meet that mm -hmm. condition mm -hmm. it's just the timing of when they meet it I applaud you bringing it out I think it's good mm -hmm. for us to do it on your, you know, mm -hmm. under your recommendation so mm -hmm. so what are the words With With no, this, yeah. uh, this it's not a public, public hearing. hearing no because it was it listed as an other item on the agenda so um, and, and and so y you would just make a motion to approve the change of that condition to um, for the easement to be recorded prior to issuance of the certificate of occupancy uh, instead of prior to issuance of the fifth building permit I would move that we approve the request by New Harmony Properties to modify the permit condition in order to record easements at certificate of occupancy Instead of building permits for property at Olander and Ford Crossing, referred to as Beachwood. Just, just to, uh, if I might, it's Wright Builders is the applicant. Oh. New Harmony is the my other wing. By Wright Builders down the street. Sorry about that. It's my fault. Okay. <laughs> so the motion should read Wright Builders. Yeah. yeah. As amended. You go along. <laughs> <laughs> No further discussion. All in favor? Okay. Well done. Thank you. Your history here you. serves you well. <laughs> there is that one additional item on those conditions. Is this an appropriate time, Carol? I'm um, sure. That would be that'd be fine if you want to go ahead and start that. If I may impose on you. Um, condition three is sort of in the same ilk but but has its own nuance. Prior to the issuance of a building permit for any lot, a public access sign should be posted at the sidewalk entrance south of the site at Olander Sidewalk 
and at Ford Crossing to indicate entrance to the proposed park. So I brought along some photographs which I can pass around as to where those locations are. And Mass Development, happy to do this. I guess there's a question of whether, from our standpoint, the, these are fully evidenced as being public. It's a park and people walk around them. Do we need a sign? It's really up to you. The building permits have been issued without the signs. So there's another mm -hmm. nuance, shall we say. Um, <clears throat> but the way that it actually looks up there, let me just I know you're not going to rescind the building permits for the houses that people are living in. Anyway. <laughs> oh, power. Can we condemn them? Can we get the building? <laughs> Is that what you just said? So, um, Ford Crossing, Olander Drive, these are the six lots. So this is the sidewalk that's under discussion, and this is the, the sidewalk. This is an eight-footer that goes all the way down along the park, and then up to, uh, and this was the big discussion here. Mm -hmm. We had our permit here and over here. So, to indicate that this is public, we think it's evidenced as because people use it all the time. <coughs> some people some other than the house owners that are yeah, adjacent to dogs and their kids and plays there. And, you know, so there's play. nothing that indicates it's not public. Right. No, it's and here is that, them off there yet. Here's that sidewalk that it goes down mm -hmm. right, yeah. mm -hmm. um, And up at the head of Ford Crossing, you know, it looks like that. Now, true, there will be other buildings here, but it does leave a public sidewalk and goes to a public park. So there, there are there is precedence there for the rail trail connectors, you know, the, the hind uh, lot one mm -hmm. between there and lot 19 that says public access trail. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it certainly could be there. We haven't done it. Well, they haven't done it. It's their job, but it's on our permit. And they're happy to do whatever you like. But our view is that maybe it's not as important. And we're happy to come back, you know, at a, with a fully noticed. Is there some reason not to do it? Um, only that if you mark, personal opinion, <clears throat> only if you mark certain as being public, it suggests that others aren't. And actually, through the middle of our condo projects, which are actually private property, there, there will be public access trails. And we think those should be marked. When we come back, you'll see us suggesting that in, uh, in September, because you're really walking between people's houses. Is this a little different? It seems like it is, it, but I don't know whether it is. I'm, I'm not. I'm not an experienced planner. I'm the least experienced planner here, probably. <clears throat> so I don't know. But we haven't, nobody's done it. And so we need some guidance on what you'd like done. Uh, I think at the time, the feeling was, you know, were these going to end up just being like private mm -hmm. uh, walks up to people's homes that mm -hmm. nobody would use? That this was somehow, mm -hmm. it's just not working that way. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, that's good news. The people that buy the houses are, do understand that it's a public way and yeah, that's can't put their lawn chairs on it and so on. Is the park itself going to have a sign? Like a lander park or Eastwood Park or whatever it is? Yeah, no, it doesn't. I don't know. I don't think that's was a requirement. Does it have a name? It's called Beachwood Park. <coughs> I, think I actually think that that, that um, is a really interesting idea. I, I think actually the, the question of whether that's a public park is maybe more vague or uncertain. Like, like can you use, can you bring your guitar and use that place? Uh, can you sled there? Might be a question if you're visiting from mm -hmm. East Hampton or something. Is that a public park? And indeed it is, right? That's the way that easement is structured. So. Okay. It just says sign. <laughs> so I know you don't like to design things, and I don't know really what. <laughs> yeah, and I think what Jonathan says is accurate. I think at the time that all this was coming together, it was very unclear that there would be a clear. It wasn't, you know, there was a there was a quite a bit of discussion about connectivity and creating trails that were publicly accessible, um, and so I think that was the genesis of needing to ensure that 
this was clearly just supposed to be part of the connection that happens across the entire Village Hill campus mm -hmm. um, from outside people coming in as well as people who live there and can sort of move throughout. So this is, uh, and then to sort of step back to the whole issue about at what level does this need and what kind of review does this need? Since this is officially a condition, I would say that this actually needs an official amendment. So with full public hearing so that then there can be a recording of a decision afterwards eliminating that condition so that it's not as though someone just decided not to perform the condition but in fact there's an official action by the board saying we no longer feel this condition is necessary so I think at this point um, Jonathan's just asking sort of for your sense of whether it makes sense for him to come back with a formal amendment um, we had a conversation about this earlier and I think you're amenable to that is um, you know if it makes sense to you that, that there be sort of this more formal public hearing and official vote on that then he would do that at the time that he comes in for the next piece of it if you feel like the signs really should be there then you might want to give that feedback now so that he doesn't bother coming back with an amendment but i think the idea just sort of um, reiterating the idea was it was it it wasn't clear at the time you know that it was going to be um that these paths were going to be publicly accessible and well it seems to me if it's a park that has a name it ought to say what the name of the park is, <laughs> which a, then implies that it's a. That's a separate issue, unfortunately. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I was just wondering, if, if, you know, on that thought, if uh, there might be a, uh, an opportunity here for staff and Mass Development and us to, to look more globally at how that is yeah. identified, yeah, and come back perhaps with a replacement suggestion that that at two or three points it should say, you know, welcome. Yeah. Or access to Beach Tree Park. Or, or whatever. Something, mm -hmm. something that, yeah. that is but less I think about the, the, just the walkway, but about right. what, well, whatever, you know, professionally the planners think makes sense, you all think makes sense. I think. And that could be done administratively. I don't think it would need to come back to the board. I think the idea was just that, is to make sure that people felt comfortable taking that path to wherever they wanted to go. So it doesn't probably necessarily need to say this is a public sidewalk. But if it said something like to Beachwood Park, then that's pretty, I think that's pretty. Are the requirements very specific? Substitute words. <laughs> I may have seen it sometime. Uh, it says, prior to issuance of a building permit on any lot, a public access sign should be posted at the sidewalk entrance at those two locations. Does it have public access with quotation no. marks around it? No. So it's pretty vague. You could put on there access to Beachwood Park or Welcome to Beachwood Park or whatever. That could be I'm sorry. Beachwood I, Park. I, seems yeah, to, yeah, yeah, to, vote yeah. to say that could be decided amongst the three parties. Amongst the right did. right builders, mass development and the planning department. What we did at the Eastview condominiums, which is actually not an easement through there, but you know there there are no gates and it, it does say welcome to Eastview to the public. You mm -hmm. can walk through there. And the kids in the neighborhood, you know, skateboard down the handrails and do all that stuff, you know, <laughs> which ultimately is good. You know, these are not inner sanctums that are protected. Well, I guess that's, I, I'm not up there. You live there. So, uh, you know, I want people to use the public way. But I'm going to surprise you. I'm actually against signs that are unnecessary. I mean, everybody's using the public way and it's accepted. I don't want to put signs up. I just, they're cluttered to me at that point if, if they're not transmitting a message that's needed. Um, but if we're going to have to do something to so solve the condition, I'm amenable to a, a, a park sign that says this is a park and give it a name so that if people want to start meeting at Beachwood Park, they know where it is. So, um, well, another possibility is to just leave the requirement as it is, and then if it's really bad, they can apply for a change. <laughs> that would be a ch I mean, we, you have to do something formal. Right. Just to stop it. But but it sounds I mean I, I think that's right. I mean it sounds like there was a legitimate concern at the time, but the experience on the ground now that people are actually there makes it kind of well, moot. I mean, you know, you don't need to tell people this is a public sidewalk because they've assumed the they've assumed it's a public sidewalk. Plants all on over the on, sidewalk. O, on well, Olander. And then the easement would give you the control of it. Right. Get them off of there. Yeah. On Olander 
if the three houses are built. I don't, it's not all that clear to me that that's a public sidewalk. No, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. The other end, it's, a, it's going along the park, and it's pretty clear. Right. So, I don't know. That's just my thought. We're, we're, we're happy to do it. What we didn't want to do was to apply for our sixth building permit, uh, which we'll do on the August 20th or 23rd or something, and then discovered that this we've missed this too. In a kind of, even though we've gotten five, and, and I really apologize for bringing you this kind of mess of laundry, but you know. We started. We're there when we, we, we made, started it. <laughs> we put the laundry in the hampers. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we were, we were, for good reason, then worried. It's like John said. We, yeah, we were somewhat, we, just, we were scorching the middle, if you know yeah. what you mm -hmm. remember. Mm -hmm. So we can't make it, we can't change a condition tonight. So we, we've been so educated. Thank you. So, uh, so we can talk. Two, two sub one. Sub three, which was, or was two. We could always continue until next January. Well, you know, well, why don't we get together and figure out? I mean, I think you probably heard some good feedback about what makes sense. So, to come develop a, a sort of uh, a solution or recommendation that meets your interest in identifying the place. Yeah, and I don't think you. Not necessarily as an interest, this and this, but. Identification of public access. So, if you're coming from out of town or from Williamsburg, you would know at two or three places that this one's you know welcome to Beach Street Park. Something like that seems yeah, to. I don't be. think it'll be Williamsburg. I think it'll be other people in the neighborhood who just didn't realize it had a name. It's not yeah, that. right. And it might be the people in the rentals who don't realize that that's their park too. And that's you know, more subtle and you know, more concerning. The best way to maintain a, a public way is for people to use it. Mm -hmm. And there right. certainly is precedent for people using public lands at their own ends. I can think of Lilly Library, for instance. Uh, people resented the addition because they used the lawn. <laughs> anyway, um, and, and it's possible for people to sort of think they can take adverse possession of stuff like that. So these buyers were uh, had drilled in with a half inch bit. You know, they they are, it's very clear to them what their relationship is to the park. They clean the sidewalk. They walk on the sidewalk. They keep the lights lit. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. So what do we have to do to this now? Just re refer to the planning department. Okay. So then the only other item I had is set of minutes because I realized um, so it was an attached set of minutes. <laughs> I, um, I don't think you guys have voted on June 13th or June 27th. So the June 13th minutes are in front of you because I didn't email them. But I emailed the June 27th. So those, that's the last, those are the last two items that I have on the agenda for you all. Okay, has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from June 13th? I take it we don't have the other ones. I didn't print the other ones out because I emailed them last week. I have one copy. I read that one and it was good. Oh. Hmm. And you read them because you told me that I had extra minutes on them. Right. Well, they sort of ran into it, right? Yeah. Move acceptance of both sets of minutes from the 13th and the 27th. Okay. That's June 13th. June 13th and 3rd. That was a motion? That was a motion. Okay. Is there a second? Come on, second. I wasn't here. That doesn't matter. I'll accept them. I second that motion. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> all in favor? Okay, all the minutes are accepted. Okay. And that's it. That's it. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? We're adjourned.